Who doesn't want to get more out of their intermittent fasting regimen in a shorter amount of time? How do we get deeper into a fast without having to spend more time fasting? There's a lot of evidence that shows that longer fasts don't always give you better results. So how do we get the benefits of a longer fast but compressed into a shorter period of time? I'm gonna show you a few ways to get deeper into a fast in a shorter amount of time. And please do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon as well. And then a big thank you to CryoFreeze. I want you to check them out after this video. I learned about CryoFreeze a couple of years ago, but they just rolled out this whole new compound. So CryoFreeze is something that you utilize after you work out, maybe when you have some muscle soreness, maybe you have a little bit of some aches and pains. Anyway, the cool thing about them is they contain 11 FDA approved compounds. So you can get some relief with in like five minutes and you just roll it on super easy and you end up getting relief for about eight hours after the fact. So I'm all about not ingesting things if I don't have to. I kind of want to avoid that first pass through the liver effect that you get that way. So cryofreeze has been a really interesting thing for me to add to my routine whenever I feel like I'm a little bit more stiff. Yes, that's true. Even me, I feel like I get stiff and I feel old sometimes. <laughs> that's honestly, probably because I used to weigh close to 300 pounds and I just have a lot of aches and pains that come along with that. So anyhow, you utilize cryofreeze, you roll it on, it's super easy. And the best part is if you're doing an intermittent fasting regime and you don't really want to consume too many things during a fasted state, this is going to bypass that altogether. So anyhow, 20% off cryofreeze, but also 20% off site wide. So check them out down below using the code in the description and that way you can save 20% off as well. Let's jump into the science. So with fasting, we have a few different ways that we burn fat. And I have to spend like 30, 45 seconds explaining this first before I can give you how we activate it. We have epinephrine and adrenaline. Okay, so we have basically uh, this adrenaline response that drives some fat loss. Well, that also drives up what is called AMPK, which is sort of your body's energy sensor. So when it recognizes that there's no food coming in and adrenaline goes up, it starts utilizing stored fat tissue. This in turn activates what are called uh, these different transporters, CD36, CPT1. The names aren't really important. They're just little vessels that transport fat into the cell for burning. But in order for all this to occur, we need to have a genetic change, gene expression. So there's a protein called PPAR. Everything I'm talking about today is about getting this PPAR activated more so that you can literally get into a fasted state and deeper as fast as humanly possible. So the first one is this. Your last meal before you start a fast ideally should be something with some Mediterranean spices. Now, I'm not just saying that because I'm a Mediterranean diet nerd. No, there's evidence that the Mediterranean spices like oregano, like thyme, like rosemary and sage are very potent activators of PPAR alpha. You see, they contain something known as hispiduline. Now, there's a cool study published in the journal Lipids that found that when people consumed these kinds of spices, they had a superior activation of PPAR. What does that mean in human terms? It means that their genes were turned on more for fat utilization. Now, to give you context, PPAR is usually only activated when the body recognizes that we're starting to use stored fat as fuel. It's sort of a natural response. The body says, oh, this guy's starting to burn his own fat. Let's activate these genes that make this process more efficient so he does not starve. Okay, so if we can have external components that activate PPR more, then we get into a fasted state even faster. Now, there's another study in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry that found that rosmarinic acid, which is in things like rosemary, also triggers a potent activation, triggers it as a ligand for PPAR. Okay, so again, just consuming things like that. Now, what do you put it on? If you put it on something like salmon or a fattier cut of fish that has high omega-3 content, well, guess what? Omega-3s are also a potent activator of PPAR. So you combine, say, take some sockeye salmon, put a little rosemary, sage, something like that on it, and have that be your last official meal before starting your fast. Well, that has scientific evidence that it could put you into a fasted state faster. Let's move on to the next. Along the same lines, there's something called lemon verdana tea. Okay, now lemon verdana tea, I read about a couple of months ago and started implementing it here and there within my fast. Well, when I test my ketones and test my glucose, I see a significant change. So it's doing something. Well, the evidence shows that lemon verdana tea, again, has a high amount of that hispiduline. Okay, so it's activating that same PPAR alpha, getting you deeper into a fast. Now, this is something that you could sip on throughout your fast. 
Now specifically, it increases the expression, the gene expression of what's called CPT1. CPT1 is the little vehicle that drives fat into the cell. So you could mobilize fat all you want into the bloodstream, but if you don't have the private escort to get it into the cell, it's just gonna circulate and then go right back into storage. So we increase the expression of CPT1, create more of those transporters, bring them into the cell. So now that we know that PPAR is stimulated not just by these natural ligands, like these herbs and stuff like that, but also by fat, well, how do we get more fat into the bloodstream? Get what I'm saying? We can have the herbs that sort of activate PPAR, but we also want to have the fat being mobilized to activate PPAR. So let's talk that. That's where ginger comes in. There are specific compounds in ginger that mobilize fat significantly, but it's pretty wild. There's something in ginger called 6-Shogol, and the evidence is now demonstrating that ginger has an effect on different ranges of PPAR proteins. Okay, so 6-Shogol decreases the amount of what is called PPAR gamma, okay, which is something that would normally cause you to store fat, but it increases PPAR alpha, which allows you to burn fat. So ginger is really interesting because the components within ginger, although there's a couple calories in ginger, will largely put you into a deeper fast and quite a bit quicker than some of these other things. But what's cool is that inside of ginger, you have other shogals too. There's another one called 10-shogal. Now, 10-shogal increases adrenaline via what is called the TRPV pathway. So in essence, ginger, in two different, completely different fashions, puts you into a deeper fasted state. It makes you have more adrenaline, but it also activates PPAR alpha, which burns more fat, and it turns off PPAR gamma, which makes you store fat again, or redeposit it as adipocytes. So pretty serious win-win there. But then there's one more piece. The American Journal of Respiratory Cell and Biology published a study that showed that the gingerols and the shogols that are in ginger, when they're combined, especially with caffeine, they can potentiate the signaling of beta agonists. Okay, what does that mean? That means they basically increase the effectiveness of caffeine. And they basically increase the effectiveness of what is called a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Okay, that basically means that it's going to allow you to signal more fat burning and signal less fat storage and signal less glucose utilization. So long story short, ginger plus caffeine could be extremely, extremely powerful. Now we circle around to the hot stuff capsaicin or capsaicin, depending how you want to say it. We're talking about things like cayenne, like red pepper. Large argument out there in the fasting community. There's a couple of calories if you were to have a little bit of cayenne pepper. So does that break a fast? Well, again, metabolically, yeah, it kind of does, but it's going to put you deeper into a fast because once again, it's working on what is called the TRPV receptor. Now that alone is sending a shock basically down the vagal nerve or up the vagal nerve, right? So when you have that vagal nerve activated, you create more adrenaline. So I'm a big fan of starting my day with a little bit of cayenne, simply because that is going to allow you to kind of kickstart that metabolic process you need via the adrenaline pathway. And then we have the big one, the one that I talk about all the time that I'm always kind of made fun of about, apple cider vinegar. Okay, apple cider vinegar increases, or drives up what is called AMPK, and that is just the metabolic switch. When AMPK is activated, it's like an energy sensor, and the body says, oh, more AMPK, that means we need to start utilizing stored body fat a little bit more. So it's like a sensor, and if we can drive that sensor up, AMPK almost causes, I don't wanna say a false reading, but it kind of triggers AMPK to go up a little bit more, and therefore signals the body to start utilizing its fat stores a little bit more. Now there's some interesting evidence surrounding apple cider vinegar and its effect on short chain fatty acids too, but I'll save that for another video. The long and the short of it, here's a simple routine you should really follow, okay? So you have your last meal and your last meal is something like fatty fish along with uh, these Mediterranean herbs, rosemary, oregano, thyme, sage, things like that, okay? Have a little bit of apple cider vinegar before bed as well. That's going to kind of kickstart the process. Then wake up in the morning, have some apple cider vinegar along with some cayenne, okay? Because the cayenne is gonna kickstart the process as well. And then sip on a little bit of ginger or even lemon verdana tea. So ginger mixed with green tea or lemon tea, kind of flip flop them, okay? And sip on that throughout the course of the day. And then if you want to, throughout the day, you can add more apple cider vinegar and you can add more cayenne. And then of course, after you break your fast, it's kind of fair game, but I recommend circling back to those Mediterranean herbs whenever you can, just to get that extension of your fast possibly into your eating period. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in. I'll see you tomorrow.